Good morning, everyone. This is Chance from TheMotorcycleJones.com, and we're going for a ride for kids today. Uh, I'm doing the 2015 Ride for Kids for Pediatric Brain Cancer Awareness. I haven't done one of these. This is my first one, so it should be a lot of fun. Hopefully get to meet a lot of nice people. And uh, I'll record it for you to see how it goes. If this light will ever turn green, no turning red. Don't do it. Never ever. Maybe this van that just pulled up will help me trigger the light. Or not. So we got a lot of clouds today, so we might get a little wet, maybe get sprinkled on a little bit. But it's all for a good cause. Besides that, I'm not going to melt. At least not today. Green means green. Green means go. Alright. Here we are. In the midst of a lot of thunder. A lot of each winds. A lot of great looking bikes. That'll be a fun ride. Definitely a lot more riders than gear. But every ride's their own ride. I oh, love those sounds though. It's like, I don't know, I'm kind of relaxed and exciting all the same. Stagger formation. We've got a police escort. She's just going to be blocking the intersections for us, so we all can stay, stay nice and safe. Should be able to catch them leapfrogging around us as they go from intersection to intersection to close it down for us. Always interesting when you're riding with a group you've never ridden with before. I can tell this one's gonna be okay. Uh, not like some of the demo rides I've seen in the past where people don't understand what a stagger is. People are on bikes they're not familiar with that demo ride, so they're all trying to find. See, zoom. Very interesting. My first ride like this, so this is kind of cool. Off to your left, you can see the Superstition Mountains. These mountains are surrounded by myths and legends of the lost Dutchman mine. A mine of untold riches and gold. But it also bears a spooky secret. There's myths of ghosts that will behead you if you get lost. It's true, look it up. 
a little spooky tale for October. It's amazing how many people get off the trails in those mountains from this side of them. They don't look like a whole lot. Like, well, how could you get lost? You can see the city the whole way. But if you go around the back side of them, whoo, he's flying. If you go around the back side of them, you can see just how expansive that mountain range actually is and how easy it would be to get turned around in in a spot where you can't see civilization. And on top of that, I, I hear that it's full of caves and canyons and lots of different places to uh, get lost in. Especially for treasure hunters looking for the, the legendary lost Dutchman mine. The little Arizona mystery. It was a beautiful day. It looked like we might, well, it rained earlier this morning. It looked like there might be more rain coming our way, but it seems to be sliding around to the north. So, looks like the heavens are smiling down on us and we're going to stay dry. Again, not that it matters to me. I like the rain. I don't know if I like the rain and group rides combination though. to shift into sixth. Woohoo! As we go on this ride, if I can, I'll get you some other shots of the Superstition Mountains so you can see what I'm talking about as far as how expansive they really are. Bumpy tar snakes. Watch for horses. You don't see a whole lot of horse crossing signs. I can't believe I've never ridden out here before. This is a great road. At least this time of year, you know, you don't have to worry as much about these tar snakes just being goopy slippery. You know, when we get out here when it's 110, 115 degrees, these tar snakes can be pretty slick. For the most part, Arizona does have great road maintenance. I think we've been going to worse for it. So now, you can see a little bit better just how far back the Superstition Mountain Range goes. I mean, on this side you can just see... I don't know if you can see it or not. We're going up and down and around. <laughs> but you can see how long they really are and how far they go back. And we, get to a high point, you'll be able to see if just go even further back to the east. And you can see how it could be actually become easy to get lost. Now, I don't know how you go from getting lost to getting beheaded by ghosts, but I can definitely see the lost part. I've never been back here. How could I live in Arizona all my life and I've never been back here? Probably the same way I've lived in the of my life and never been to the Grand Canyon. We tried to go once when we were in college. And we scraped our pennies together because we were poor college kids, right? And we got up there and when we got to the entrance to the park ranger, instead of wanting to charge us $20 for the car load, which was what they were supposed to charge us, they tried to charge us $20 per person. And we didn't have $40. We only had 20 something dollars. Well, probably a little bit more than that because actually we didn't. We probably only had the $20 to get in. 
and enough money to for gas to get back because we ended up just going to the McDonald's near the Grand Canyon, which is like the second, at the time it was the second price, most pricey or second most expensive McDonald's in the world and had a Big Mac or some other value meal and got a little bit of gas and drove back to Flagstaff without ever seeing the Grand Canyon. I've seen it from a plane several times. But I've seen it from a distance from a car because I don't ever remember a stopping at the Grand Canyon when I was a kid. Been to the Four Corners, been to Sunset Crater, been other places, but I've been to Tombstone, been to Tonto National Monument, some other cliff and cave dwellings I haven't gone to yet that I'd like to. Lots of Arizona that we haven't seen yet. Lots of vacation next year. Hmm, maybe there's a solution. that long to get out here either. Wow, look at those rocks. How pretty is that? I know me looking for a couple seconds probably wasn't long enough for you to really see, but maybe I can get you some better pictures up here in a little bit. We're just turning around. Screw my bladder. It's all right. Now we're all working the clutch. We can't wave it back at you guys. <laughs> so maybe I can get a little bit better view of those. Uh, this for you, this rock cliffs. Scene shots taking a little bit longer to turn around. Oh, look where you want to turn, people. I guess getting everybody lined back up and going again would take a substantial amount of time, I would imagine. But no longer than it took us to get out here. Shouldn't have any problem uh, making my bladder obey. Always makes me think of the part in Liar Liar where he, uh, Jim Carrey's character is trying to get a recess so to buy himself some time because he can't defend his client because he can't lie blah 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 and they mentioned that all the uh, potential harmful side effects of not allowing yourself to go to the restroom and go to the restroom and 
in the Jasmine. Is, is that true? Oh, we got raindrops. <laughs> Which encouraged you guys to say, well, it must be because he was able to say it. Because again, he's not able to lie, right? But let's bring it back to a personal note, which is going to border on TMI, I'm sure. And I, I was in a situation where I did hold it for a long, long time. And I really, really had to go. And I held it so long I sprained my bladder. Which made it, made it sound impossible. It happened. I sprained my bladder, which made it very painful to urinate for about a week afterwards. So, you have to be careful. Wow, it's crazy that we just came through here three minutes ago, four minutes ago. Arizona's fantastic. everybody spread out a little bit more giving each other a little bit more room which makes a lot of sense you're not going to be able to stop as fast when the roads are wet just like if you were in a car I was listening to uh, a group of podcasters this morning they're at the AM Expo sounds like they're having a great time I'd love to do that before it's far away um but they were talking how they used to spend so much time producing their podcasts, going back and editing and trying to make them perfect. And then a lot of them just cut it down to, to size and now they just throw in the intro and the exit and that's it. Because they found that just as many people will listen to it with the imperfections as... as they were when they were trying to make it perfect and you know there's a a labor payoff you know a labor balance there so I probably won't be overly editing my videos um you're gonna get me as I am right either you're gonna like me for who I am or you're not and in most editing I'll, be, editing I'll be doing is just trying to keep them down to a reasonable size because no one has time to watch a 45 minute video, right? Not in this day and age of give it to me now, I want it now. I think that's what makes YouTube and some of the other programming so successful is that you can get little bits of entertainment here and there without investing a whole lot of time. You know? Also Netflix for to a certain extent. I mean, if you wait and watch a, a season of your favorite TV show when it's on Netflix without com commercials, instead of investing an hour, you're only investing like 38 minutes. And that's a lot better investment of time. Looks like we're almost back to the beginning wish me luck there's a drawing for a brand new motorcycle and a scorpion helmet so hopefully I'm feeling lucky again thanks for coming along with me on this ride for kids 2015 uh, in support of pediat pediatric wow Wow, let's do that again. Well, thanks for coming with me on this ride. The 2015 Ride for Kids in support of pediatric cancer, brain cancer research. Um, you know, it's been a fun ride. I hope all of you enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and uh, stay safe out there. Do good things and no death day.